Alright, so let's move on. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit quick save up here. And, or you can even save out a ZTL file by going to the tool section and hitting save as. Please save often as that's going to be very important to avoid our crashes. Uh, so uh, moving forward, what we're going to do in this lesson is, is we're going to begin the initialized block out of our eyebrow plate here. And then uh, after that we're going to show how it can convert to a uh, piece that is like a Z model of piece. So, so to get started for that, the first thing we need to do is, is that since I'm going to be doing this through a mass extraction, I'm going to need some divisions on here. And if you're completely new to that, uh, just remember it's quite simple. All you have to do is just go through geometry on the right hand side, it's below subtools, and just hit divide and you'll double the amount of polygons and as a result you'll also go ahead and have some division layers to work with, uh, like so. And the other thing you can do is just hit control D as a quick key to that to divide. And if you want to cycle between the lower resolutions or the higher res resolutions of the indicated divisions here, you can just hit shift D or just normal D key alone to go through. So that's just sort of a quick rundown. I'm going to work on a division four and do a mass extraction through there. Uh, to get started with that. I'm, I'm going to use a Wacom tablet, but you may not necessarily need it. This is going to be a pretty simplistic shape uh, for you to work with here, so it's not going to be too crazy. So to start off with, we're going to be drawing a mask on here, and to do that we're going to hold the control, T, uh, the control key, and then while holding the control key, make sure you have your stroke free hand put on, and I'm just going to go ahead and, whoops, just simply hold control and make sort of like a triangular shape. Now while, uh, if you want to minus stuff off of this mask, you can also hit control. While holding control, hit and hold down alt and you can minus things off of the mask as well. So I'm going to make something relatively big here. And uh, maybe do a little bit of masking like so. You know what, I'm just going to leave that all there. And what I'm doing, think of it like I'm just cutting out a piece that fits the angle of what I need on here. And so after I go through that, I'm going to go through and I'm going to look at my subtool. I'm, it's a little close to the eye, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to my stand, my uh, control T key, bring my, while holding it down, I'm going to bring my size down a little bit and minus a little bit of that off, like so. And then after I'm satisfied with that. It doesn't have, you don't need perfect lines here when you draw this mask out. The real sculpting begins after our extract. But uh, to get there, when we're done with creating our mask, we're going to then go to where it says subtool and go to the very, very bottom where it says extract. And I found 0 0.06 uh, worked for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with that uh, kind of thickness and just hit extract. And uh, when you hit extract, you get basically like a, uh, a projected image uh, look to say, hey, is this what you want? That way you don't have to generate a subtool and say, no, I don't want to keep generating subtools till I find something I like. You get a little bit of a preview before you officially hit that accept button and it creates that extra piece mesh that you see into another subtool up here. So for that, I will go ahead and hit accept and you'll have a new subtool piece. The mask is there. I'm going to go ahead and clear that off. And this is where we're going to begin our real sculpting. Now to get started with that, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to use my head piece here as a little bit of a reference. I'm not going to turn him invisible and then just guesstimate where it's going to be. I'm just going to try and just simply turn it transparent. And 
and transparent is right here uh, where it says activate edit opacity where you see the TRANSP. When you get that, you have a ghost transparency mode you can toggle on or off. I liked it for this particular scenario. It's going to help me a little bit just to see it uh, that way. So from this point on, we need to access our trim curve brush to get where we want to go. Now to access trim curve brush, we want to hit control shift and then we want to come up here to our left click and then cycle and go all the way here to our trim curve and then left click on there. To access the trim curve brush, we do control shift, hold down, and then we can drag out a line. You can release it like so. Again, trim curve works at anything that is below the shaded line that you see right there is what gets subtracted. So that's important to remember. Unlike the clip curve brush that just mashes everything down and creates sort of non-manifold edging, Trim Curve literally cuts off all the pieces and fills in the gaps with a polygroup. Now this has its advantages and disadvantages because in one end it doesn't handle corners very well. And it will, you'll have to have to work on workarounds where you're combining Clip Curve and Trim Curve together uh, to help eliminate that kind of issue. Normally I've found uh, that I try to avoid it all the same by uh, doing uh, very broader strokes with the trim curve. So that's kind of the general rule of thumb when working with trim curve. It, you, you should try to keep your strokes as broad as possible. It's not a precision curve uh, because you'll find that it doesn't handle filling in high acute corners very well. And the other disadvantage of trim curve is, is that it is not symmetrical. It, you hit the X key, you will not get symmetry options for the trim curve, even if there is a key that's showing up. So unfortunately, that's a little bit of a bummer. So from here on out, I'm going to carve out my eyebrow faceplate by, first of all, turning off symmetry. I'll hit X. I'm going to hold down Shift and Control draw out a curve. I can release the control at this point, uh, shift and control. I can release those at this point. And now I can work with either holding down spacebar to bring the curve wherever I want, or pressing alt to create a sort of bezier point curve for the curve to bend around, which is something you're going to have to do. Now, one of the biggest, now I'm going to go ahead and just uh, go through solo mode here which because I, I want you to see this here your biggest objective on here is, is whenever you create a cut on a trim curve you want it to be as clean as possible for the sake of Z Remesher 3.0 to read because Z Remesher relies on creases polygroups primarily uh, for it and very well defined hard edges primarily all to make its calculation it's still not the most perfect uh, computing uh, Z remeshing tool, but it's significant improvement compared to where it was before, where it just bunched up all the curves in a corner like the pinch brush. So turn off solo mode here. Make sure ghost mode is back on. And from here on, I'm just going to hold control, shift, and cut out my curves. Again, I'll just call out uh, what it is I see on here. I'm just control shift, bring out the curve, release control shift, space to move around the curve. When I adjust it right here, I'm still holding left down to keep my curve alive. And then I'm holding left alt to create a cut bend right there, making sure there's a nice clean polygroup curve right there. Doing the same thing up here. And then I'm going to do I'm going to maneuver, move it around. Again, same thing. And again, same thing. Finally, I like to cut that off like so. Something that's bendable, something that works like so. So now we have our first.
first piece. Now, one of the first things that we're going to do after this in the next lesson, you can be before we begin zero measure, feel free to access your move tool, which is BMV. Apologies, I hit the less sign there. <laughs> BMV, which will give you the quick key to your move tool, or if you just hit the B key and just simply look for the move brush, you can just do that as well. And then with the move tool, you can actually do some more editing in terms of what you want this to look like. Remember, if you want the brush to move toward you or away from you, hold down the left alt key and you can do that. So just sort of get yourself a good cleaning point. This is all going and we're going to talk about in the next lesson how to clean this piece up a little bit more so that it can be ready for a Z remesher and how we can go through uh, remeshing iterations to get something cleaner. So stay tuned.